Well, it is good to see everyone out this evening. I appreciate Chip's song selection as he asked me what the sermon was for tonight. I told him we were going to talk about amazing ants. And he kind of gave me that look on his face and, you know, that puzzled look you get when you surprise somebody. And then I told him what the scripture reference was in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 25. Every song that he has selected tonight has something to do with the book of Proverbs. The lesson in each of the songs that we have sung teach us a lesson from Proverbs. So if you go over to the book of Proverbs, chapter 20, or chapter 30, and we look at verse 25, it says the ants are not, are a people not strong, yet they prepare their food in the summer. What do we mean as we think about amazing ants? Isn't it amazing what God uses in his word to teach us some great spiritual lesson. Think from the beginning to the end. How many parts of his creation, nature, that he uses to teach us valuable lessons. And when we think about ants, they may be the most unlikely of the things or source that he uses to teach us a spiritual lesson. If I were to ask you tonight, how many of you, as you were growing up, or maybe when your children were growing up, how many of them had an ant farm? Did you ever have one of those? I see a lot of people shaking their head no. Well, guess what? I didn't have one either. <laughs> but I had some friends who had one. And it simply amazed us as we would sit there and watch those ants inside that little one inch by six or eight inch square box. How they would be moving around and how that they were constantly on the move. The one thing I remember about ants, well, two things. I know that in about two weeks, maybe three weeks, Somehow, some way, no matter what we've done at the house, there's going to be an army of ants trying to come across the living room floor. I don't care what you do to prepare, Jim. You can spray, you can do whatever. They're still going to find a way. But the second thing that I remember that goes back to my childhood and please don't report me, but we used to take magnifying glasses and we would hold them over the top of the ant so the sun would shine through. Chip, you know what that did to that ant? Instant barbecue. That was cruel. Fred, you shaking your head, don't? No, sounds like something you do too. But you, you know, you, you, you think about the ant and you, 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 you wonder, what is the purpose of an ant? It's kind of like wondering what the purpose of a mosquito is. But God uses the ant to teach us some very valuable lessons. Number one, understand that the ant's ways, the way they conduct themselves was wise in God's sight. When you think about how they are wise in God's sight, go back again in the book of Proverbs, and look at chapter 6, Proverbs chapter 6, and look at verse 6. He says, go to the ant, you sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise. Have you ever really watched an ant? Not in the ant farm, but have you ever watched a, a group of ants in your life? Have you ever watched? And I'm asking that, and I'm not be, trying to be facetious and ask that, but have you ever really watched how an ant works and what an ant does? The first thing that you should notice is they are always busy. 
You might say, when does an ant take a nap? Because every time I see the ants, they are working. They are busy. You might think to yourself, what are they busy doing? What are they busy doing when you see them? They are simply preparing for winter. They are gathering provisions to survive through the winter until they can come out and be an annoyance to us in the spring. When you look at the ant, the ant has a goal. And the ant is going to seek to achieve their goal. You all will like this quote. It comes from your former football coach if you're a Tennessee fan. Philip Fulmer once said, never mistake activity for progress. You might say, what does that have to do with the ant? Never mistake what the ant is doing, what you perceive the ant to be doing. Because the ant, by doing what they're doing, is making progress to survive the winter. Another thing about ants is, unfortunately, ants are not very smart. This year, when the ants come out and they start invading your house, I challenge you to see that trail of ants and to take your finger and just run it across in the middle of that trail of ants. Perhaps you've done that. Do you know what that, those ants are going to do? They're going to scatter. They're not going to know where to go because they are lost. Without a leader, without someone, or someone, without another ant to follow, they lose their sense of direction. Reminds me of a time long, long ago. And I'm trying to remember, I believe it was when my grandfather passed away. I was at Freed Harden. Kay was in Mississippi. And Kay's dad brought her to Henderson. And it was cold. And my little old four of Mercury Links would not start. But thankfully her dad got it started and we were off to Kentucky. A long journey because of snow and ice. And so we got there and we got to Michigan. She says she's never going to Michigan again in the winter. And you can verify 99.9% of this story with her because I'm going to tell it the way I remember it. She may remember it differently. We get there and there wasn't a whole lot of snow on the ground. As we're there, they get about two feet of snow. Oh, she said, I, she just, I just read her lips. She said, no, it was four feet. All I know is that when you got in the car, when we went to the funeral home, Brother Kenny, Chicago's like this, maybe. When you got in the car and you closed the door and as you're going down the road and when you look out the window, Brother Freeman, guess what she saw? All she saw was snow. And if that wasn't bad enough, after the services were over and we're on our way home and it's dark and we're close somewhere around South Bend, Indiana in a little place called La Paz, Indiana. And a blizzard is blowing. You think it was bad here Thursday night? 
Brother, you couldn't see from here to the microphone in front of you very well. And so we were coming down U.S. Highway 31W. And all we were doing is following the taillights of the car. Sister Pearl, she you take it in your head. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You're following the taillights of the car in front of you. And guess where most of the taillights were ending up? They were ending up in me and in a ditch, Brother Kenny. My dad, being wise like an ant, said, we're done with driving. So we pull into this little truck stop. I don't remember the name of it. That's the 0.1% that you can ask her. All I know is we went in before the gentleman closed. And he said, I'm getting ready to go home now. You all stay and make yourself at home. So we spent the night in a truck stop in La Paz, Indiana. The ants followed the one in front like we were following the cars and trucks. And we got up the next morning, and yes, my dad went out to start the car to get it warm, and it caught on fire. <laughs> the catalytic converter caught on fire. We got it put out, and we headed off for home as the sun was shining bright. Guess what we saw all along the way, Chip? All those people who weren't wise enough to stop. They were to the right, and they were to the left. I don't know that there were enough tow trucks in town to pull all of them out of the ditch. But that's how the ants are. Follow the leader. We know that ants can carry several times their weight. Yet did you know if you drop an ant in a bowl of water, it will die. It can't survive. You go back again to the book of Proverbs, and we've already read chapter 6, verse 6. But look at what verse 7 says also. We didn't read that. As he says in that verse, he says, which having no captain, overseer, or ruler, provides her supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. The ants don't need to be told what to do, Chip. They just do it. That is why, why ants are not very smart. They just in, in, inherently know what to do. And the ant knows thirdly that a time is coming that the gathering time will be no more. I believe that is one of the lessons God wants, the lessons that God wants you and, 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 and me to learn is there's coming a time as we say, work for the night is coming. Why? Because there's coming a time when we can work no more. So what that is, illust what that is illustrating to us is very simply that there is a time coming when our work on earth is done. And there's coming a time when we are going to stand before God in judgment. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27, you all remember what it says. And it is appointed once for man to die, but after that, or after this, the judgment. There's coming a time when just as the ant can't go out and harvest and prepare and store up for the winter, there's coming a time when you and I are going to run out of time to prepare for the judgment day. So the question we must ask is, what are we doing? What are you doing to prepare for the judgment day? How you answer that question is very important. But the second thing about the ant is, I want us to notice the strength of an ant. 
As we said earlier, an ant can carry several times their own weight, yet they are very weak. When you go back over and you look at Proverbs 30 and verse 25, the very first part says they are a people not strong. Compared to us, an ant is really nothing when it comes to strength and it comes to power. How much effort does it take for us to put an ant to death? How much strength do we have to exert over the ant? Is our strength much greater than theirs? Yes. You see, I don't know many people who are afraid of ants. Now, I understand that there are ants that can bite. And I understand that if you get in a hill of ants these days called fire ants, you're going to be in significant pain because it hurts. Try running over one of those fire ant hills with your lawn. Someone said, Brother Greg, what do you mean? Just run over one and you'll see what I mean. What does that lawnmower do when you run over that fire ant hill? Those blades are doing what, guys? They're spinning. Freddie, they're creating suction. And so when you go over that fire ant hill, Chip, you're going to suck every one that's close to the surface. Out. Yes, someone says, yeah, Brother Ray, but they're going to go out to discharge. Yeah, they're going to go out to discharge. And you better hope the wind isn't blowing your way. Because if it is, they're going to end up all, trust me. <laughs> trust me on that. I know. Chip, you, you, you shaking your head, you know that too? wonder what it would do if you ran over one with a bush hog. You, oh, you've done it? You've got to be careful, brother. These ants, they're small. They look, they look weak. And for the most part, they are. But they can carry a mighty punch. But secondly, they're under the strength of an ant. The strength of the ant is not found in what it accomplishes. The strength of the ant is accomplished in the way it lives its life. The second part of the verse says, yet they prepare their food in the summer. Guess what the ant doesn't do? The ant does not waste time. How many of us waste time? How many of us are poor sometimes at time management? So I ask you a question, why then, and I'm not talking just to you, I'm talking to myself. Why do we waste time? Why do we not place value on our time like the ant does. You see, God has given us what? How many hours are in a day? 24. He gives us these hours. You and I choose how we want to use that time. Our choice is we can squander it or we can use it to prepare for the judgment day. But number three, notice there, our strength needs to be in how we live, not in how much weight we can, we can live. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with being physically fit. There's nothing wrong with diet, exercise, and all of those things. 
I saw a meme a while ago that says, do you know what diet means? Diet is a acronym for did I eat that? That struck me because I need to go on a diet. So it's, no, no, Brother Ray, you're fine. No, I, I need to go on a diet. Maybe I don't need to go on a diet, but I need to go on a diet watching what I eat. Maybe I need to make healthier choices. Nothing wrong with being physically fit and dieting to be in the best shape that you can be in. But if you go back over to the book of Ecclesiastes, look in chapter 12, and here's the key. Verse 7 says, Then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit will return to God who gave it. What's more important, physical fitness or spiritual fitness? Spiritual. Absolutely. It's got to be spiritual. And that's what Solomon says to us in Ecclesiastes there. You see, our souls are the eternal part of our being. Our souls are the part that needs to be nourished in order to meet God. And the way we live life, let us remember, our life needs to do what? Reflect Christ. He left for us a perfect example we need to be reflecting Him in our life. That is our strength. That we can be a blessing to those who are around about us. But number three, the question we must ask is how do we store for our winter? How do we store for life eternal? Someone once said this, life is represented by the four seasons. When it is spring, that refers to our birth, our childhood, and our teen years. In the summer, it is our adult productive years. In the autumn, it is our elderly life as we near the end of life. And then winter represents our time is over. I thought that was a pretty good summary of how it is. You see, there's another lesson that God uses his creation to teach us. And so if we look at the ant who is preparing for winter, our winter is very simply preparing for our death. We live life in order that we might die. We live life so that we might, as Brother Joe prayed in his prayer, that we might reach that heavenly home that has been prepared for us. We go back to the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6 and look at verse 19. Jesus says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. If we store up treasures on earth, guess what? It can be taken from us. But if we store up our treasures in heaven, it cannot be taken away. You know, in our world today, how many of you all have heard of a porch pirate? Does anybody know what a porch pirate is? A porch pirate is somebody when you order a package in FedEx or UPS delivers, maybe even the post office. They deliver that package and they set it on your front porch. A porch pirate is someone who comes 
it steals your package. I was watching a video earlier of a young man who decided to get even with a porch pirate. He said, you know, I've engineered all of these great products, part of which what he had engineered, Chip, is used in space exploration equipment. And so he came up with a way to take four, well, I don't have my phone. He took four iPhones and he put them in a package, angled it just a certain way, 3D printed a top where the camera would shoot out through a hole that had a, uh, you couldn't tell that was there. And so he wired all of these together and got them to record and only triggered the recording device when the top was taken off of the box and the switch was set. Well, one other thing that he did, he put a spray can of a body odor that sprayed five times every 30 seconds. But not only did he do that, he built a centrifuge type deal <coughs> to which when you lifted it up and the switch was activated, when the box was taken all the way off, he had one pound of the world's finest glitter. All the time these cameras were recording the porch pie. And he put a GPS tracking device in it so he was able to locate no matter where that package went. That glitter, when the porch pirate opened the package, filled his car with glitter. Y'all know how hard it is to vacuum glitter up? Let me use another illustration in my help. How many of you remember going to a wedding and after the reception they had those little bags of rice? <clears throat> got, 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 does anybody remember throwing rice at the bride and groom? Is that a thing these days? I don't think it is as much anymore. Bird seed. Do you, and they do bird seed now. They do bird seed because it's more uh, pleasant for the bird because the bird, when they swallow the rice, it can choke them. How many of you have ever tried to vacuum rice out of a car? Mike and Jake, near, nearly impossible to get all that rice out of the car. When we lay up for ourselves treasures on earth, when we value the earthly things more than the spiritual things, we are not preparing for our winter. And so by making our spiritual growth the treasure that will secure our future, you go back and look at Matthew 6, verse 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. If our treasure is on earth, we can be worried and worried and worried that we can lose it any minute. If our treasure is in heaven, then our hearts will be with God and we will live our life accordingly. When you think about the ant, great lessons. Always when they are alive and moving, they're preparing for the winter to come. What are we preparing for? You see, you and I need to be wise like the ant and not lazy like some of us are. We need to prepare for our winter when the body separates from the soul and the spirit and returns to God and our body goes back to the dust of the earth. Our spiritual storage, it's not on earth. It's 
not in the things that we possess. We know the scripture says, what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Our storage needs to be in heaven as we have that true relationship that God desires for us. Do you realize your winter and my winter, it's closer every single day. And because our winter is getting closer by the day, we need to be prepared. <coughs> Whose choice is it to be prepared? Yours for you and me for me. Tonight, if you made the right choice to prepare for your winter, if you hadn't, why don't you come and begin that preparation? You see, we're on a spiritual journey, but we've got to begin that spiritual journey through obeying the Word of God. Begin that journey by being baptized into Christ if you're not a member of the body of Christ. Or if you are and you've turned away and you began to store up on earth instead of storing up in heaven, you can make that change tonight through repentance and confession. You let us pray with you. Let us pray for you. You know your need. We're here to help you. We want to pray for you and we want to encourage you to make the journey towards your winter. Tonight, if you have a need, won't you come while we stand and while we sing? Thank you.